Hey everyone, Sean Clement here at the beautiful Royal Quebec Golf Club in our wonderful indoor facility for Golf WRX. And today we're talking about why golf instruction can be so gosh darn confusing. The perfect example is with all of the brouhaha that goes around the Players' Champion, Rory McIlroy pulled off a fantastic win. And um, there was a, a little advertising for the Golf Channel afterwards that he was going to be with Martin Hall and talking about, you know, why he hits the driver so well. And uh, here's a clip for you. Sorry about the audio. So you notice he is talking about how he has that subconscious move. You even saw uh, Francesco Molinari doing a beautiful warm-up routine. You had the camera moving, you know, facing in this direction. He would go to the top of his backswing and then big squat, go to the ground and then push off the ground. So he's using a lot of those ground forces to get the distance that he's trying to get. We've been talking about this for 10 years on YouTube at least. And so the human machine is already wired to do this. And you could hear Rory talking about when he was young and there was actually a, a YouTube video of him at age nine. And he was an absolute poster boy at age nine for how we teach here. He's talking about his high hands, which Brandel Chambly loves of course, and Jack Nicklaus did that. So that has nothing to do with him, you know, coming too far from the inside. That was an, another problem altogether. So, but he was nice high hands, beautiful squat. That's how a human, a human machine works on this planet. So if you were on a swing and you wanted to stand up on the swing, you needed to go a little higher, you would use your legs to naturally pump yourself to a much higher height and get more speed. So we are already gravity geniuses as far as that's concerned. And that's why Rory was talking about how subconscious it is. But then in the same breath, he says, well, when I'm at the top of the backswing, I start, I think about, you know, moving my left knee and then pushing off my right side. So, it, you know, it goes to show that there's still an issue with golf instruction because they're saying that you need to make sure to do this stuff so that you can minimize your mistakes. Well, how about we plan on making the shot that we want to hit and not protecting against uh, a so-called possible miss, which really isn't how you want to go about your life, is it? So let's plan for the shot, let's prepare for the shot, and let's execute into that shot and forget about everything else. And then you can see through another interview we find out a little later on after the win, and Brad Faxon is, you know, whispering texts to Rory and telling him, hey, listen, you know, the conditions are very difficult today, the scores are not going to be low, you better be in your creative mode and focus on your golf shots and, and keep those swing thoughts and the swing mechanics at bay. He also has this relationship with Faxon that's pretty revealing. He had a text exchange with Brad yesterday morning before he went out on the golf course. And Brad harkened back to something Rory told him earlier this year when Rory went from 
upstate New York, where he spent Christmas with his wife's family to Kapalua. And it was, you know, extreme change of climate, golf course he's never seen before, it's windy. And he told facts in that he just forgot about technique and swing thoughts and just thought about trying to be creative and hit golf shots. And Faxon brought that up again yesterday morning, the idea being we know the golf course is going to be difficult, the conditions are going to be rough for everyone, and no one is likely to post a low number and get off to a great start, and if he can just focus on being creative and hitting shots rather than the swing mechanics, he would be in a good place, and I think he looks as though he relied on that yesterday. Yeah. And that's exactly what transpired, isn't it? So it's not about being creative, it's about, hey, what shot is required and what portfolio of shots do I have to match up with those requirements? And hey, if I don't have that shot, well, what's another option that I can use because the options are literally endless. What other option am I going to use? And then, hey, there's my portfolio. That option fits really well. And then if I execute that, I will have another shot that's going to fit my portfolio as well. So we'll never know what really transpired with that shot from John Rahm and that little exchange he had with the caddy and, and how he feels that the caddy implanted some doubt in his mind because of those little furrows in the bunker that were matching up with his shot. So to me, I don't think that Rom was on fire enough and was in the zone enough to pull that shot off. It was a no-brainer. Lay up in front and then, you know, he's really good with the wedge and the worst that you're going to make is a par. You're not going to lose anything on the field and then, hey, get your butt in gear on the other hole and, and get it done. So he really burned his chances there with that very high-risk shot. Now, if you're in doubt, obviously, don't do it. Go ahead and make that layup, but that's a lesson he's going he's gonna to learn in the long run, that patience lesson, uh, and that's what you need to, to, to really perform well in the majors, and Jack Nicklaus was the perfect example, and the same as Tiger. So, if I wanted to, let, let's say, hit my um, uh, draw, I got an intermediate point here, I got my setup, and I'm asking myself, hey, when I deliver in the direction I want to start the ball, does everything here feel proper at address? Will this setup allow me to deliver my draw to the target? Yes. So what's the feel I need to deliver in that direction? And that's where you look at Rory talking about, hey, knee here, push off there. Well, let's look at a simple task that will engage your subconscious. Well, your subconscious is basically your self-preserving system. We've been on this planet for a while now. You know, six million years ago, we went from here to here. And then for about three million of those years, we were hunter-gatherers. We threw a lot of stuff at our food. Why do you think we love baseball and hockey and, and tennis and all of these sports where we sling and hit stuff? Well, that's because our DNA is built for that. So if I want to slash a sword, well, you notice I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to live very long doing that. So my brain's going to go to the ground, use the ground to get my body out of the way. So your subconscious or your, your self-preserving machine works at 40 million bits of information per second. And your conscious mind works at 40 bits of information per second. So Rory is catching little glimpses of what's happening in his swing because people are asking him all the time. And because he doesn't teach golf, he plays golf for a living. Well, he's going to say, well, it feels about like this. And he's saying, well, my knee's doing this and my, I'm push it feels like I'm pushing off my right side. Well, what he's doing is he's, he's pushing off the ground to turbocharge his swing to his target. When he's performing well, when you're nine years old, and you, don't, you don't have a fear in the world, you're going that way and you're whipping that way and that's why those things go really well. And when you lose your focus, well, your swing doesn't perform as well and then somebody behind you says, well, your body, your body positions weren't jiving on that one. You need to fix these body positions. The first thing you need to fix is your focus. What are you trying to do? 
Are you focused on delivering that way with confidence and ease and, and, and all that good stuff? Or are you protecting or are you worried about hitting the golf ball? Well, that, that can't be your target. So this is where wisdom in golf really, really shines. And if you, you look at our premium, I mean, I don't really talk a lot about our, I and mean, I don't do a hard sell on our premium you know, website, but for five bucks a month, we have over 160 videos that take you, you start with Wisdom in Golf 1.0, and it takes you through analogies and tasks that are gonna light up the machine properly. So I wanna slash a sword, it's going to light me up. I want to skip a stone on water, it lights me up. I want to throw a frisbee, it lights up the machine. Then we plug that into golf shots. So we say, well, when you perform that task from here, does it feel like the ball is going to be struck nicely? Okay, so I'm going to skip my stone on the pond in that direction. Yep, that felt like skipping the stone in that direction and get that beautiful crisp, crisp solid contact and that beautiful shot being executed in that direction. So it takes you from analogy to task to the understanding of all that and what transpires when you focus on that, all the good stuff happens. And then it tells you, well, when you're executing and you're staying on that task, this is what's gonna happen. And if you fall into the, you know, the, the pitfalls, the, the short circuits that prevent you from performing those tasks. And then at the end, we talk about, hey, let's execute a few shots on the golf course. And what does a proper pre-shot routine look like? It has everything to do with that target. If that's your target, you're already lost because you literally have 180 degrees worth of possibilities to put the ball. So you got to be over here. So a perfect example, and we'll finish with this. If I want to throw my club into the target, so if I was here and I want to just throw my club into my diamond-shaped target right there. So you notice my brain knew exactly when to let go. Why? Because I have a target. If I didn't have a target, I could literally leave it go up, up here or just throw it into the ground. But because I have a specific target, the brain knows when to shift, when to clear, how much to clear, and when to let go. It's the same thing if I was going to do it underhand. So if you look at my video entitled Throwing the Club and Throwing the Club Straight, Sean Clement. So I got my diamond-shaped target right now. My eyes are there, but my attention is on that diamond-shaped target, and I throw it there. Look at my finish. There's how I activated that kinetic chain. So if I stay over there, notice my diamond shaped target is right on this height. My club left on that height. If I wanted to throw it above the diamond shaped target, I'd be there. If I want to throw it below, I'd be there. So I'd be focused below, into, or above. See that? 40 million bits of information per second. You are a genius when it comes to slinging stuff. So when you really stick to your task, amazing things are going to happen, all right? We have that roadmap for you, and we want you to enjoy this game to its fullest. So, you know, get in there, enjoy it. We'll see you next week.